Hello everybody. In this video we're going to show how to create a simple survey in Microsoft Excel. Nothing too complicated. I already have a form built out in front of me. It's again it's nothing fancy. It's just asking for select your gender, type in your age, and do you have a driver's license. Um, in this video the purpose of it is not to show you how to create a drop down list or how to fill how to create a form. It's simply this video is simply to show you how you can save these responses to another worksheet in the back of the workbook and in this case it's going to be to survey responses this can be a hidden tab but in this case I'm going to keep it visible for the purpose of this video and it's just going to fill in this data right here and let me go ahead and um, get started I have my developers tab set up I'm going to do insert and I'm going to do under act device controls a command button and I'm going to right click it go to properties and just click submit let me type in submit under caption I'm just going to resize it. And all we're going to look for is C6, C7, and C8. These are the three fields that we're going to be working with. I'm going to double click the submit button. And I'm just going to create a variable that says Q1 answer. That's going to be sheets. And the name of the sheet, in this case it's home, dot range and I'm gonna call this this is C6 and I'm gonna do for Q2 and Q3 and we just gotta make sure you change the C6 to 7 and 8 because again we're looking at 6, 7 and 8 the very first thing you want to do is make sure that your user puts in all the responses needed so what we can do is do if Q1 answer is equal to blank blank uh, well I'm sorry double quote double quote to be a blank then message box fill in Q1 and then exit sub and if so all we're doing is closing out the if statement but we're doing an exit sub which pretty much is saying uh, telling the application to quit and I'm just gonna copy and paste this because we're gonna do the same thing for Q2 and Q3 but of course you have to change it Q2 answer fill in Q2 question 3 answer and then Q3 so then right now if I'll try to run this code right now take us out of design mode and hit submit we're gonna put in fill in Q1 so right now I'm gonna do type in mail hit submit now it's telling me to fill in question 2 type in your age just put in an age there hit submit and now it's telling you to fill in question 3 do you have a driver's license just put yes and hit submit so now nothing happens because it's it's past those if statements so the next thing that we need to do is get prepared to actually output the data to the survey responses. So now let's go ahead and that's going to be our next piece. So let's do row number is equal to one. We're just going to do a loop. Do, do events. And we're going to do row number. Let me copy this right here. Row number is equal to row number plus one. Item in review is equal to sheets and I'm looking at survey responses so I'm gonna copy this survey responses dot range a and row number all I'm looking for is looking for the next blank space in in the survey responses there is a more efficient way to do this but in this video this is the way I'm, I'm doing it and I'm explaining um, finding the last row of an Excel work of an item in the Excel workbook that has a value. So let me see loop until item in review is equal to nothing. So pretty much all we're looking at is, is, is A. And to get us started I'm just gonna put transaction ID 1. I'm gonna type in null and everything else. Null, no. no. because what I'm going to do is use this number as a primary key you can say and I'm just going to increment it by one so the very first transaction is going to have the number two or better yet let me just put this as a, z as a zero okay so the last number or I'm going to put a variable last transaction ID is equal to and then we're going to do Server responses, row number minus one. That way we can backtrack one track. And I'm going to show you what this code is doing so far. 
I run this code, it should give us a zero, which is perfect. If I also change this to a one, then it's going to tell us the last transaction is a one. But just to show you one more thing, if I was to expand this down, two, three, four, five, six, it should give us a six. And there you have it. So now we know that the next transaction is going to be a seven. So this is the part that we're going to actually put the data in. I'm going to do dim next next transaction ID as an integer because we need to convert this item to an, an, an integer. So we're going to do next next transaction ID is last transaction ID plus one. Visual Basic will actually convert it automatically. Other programming languages are not as friendly, so I'm gonna just kinda leave it like that. And just to test our code out, I'm gonna do message box next, next transaction ID. And it tells me that it's seven, which is good, that's correct. If I was to erase all this code out, put a zero, it should tell me the next transaction ID should be a one. And there you have it. Okay. So now let's actually output the data. We're going to do sheets, survey responses, range A. And we're not doing row number minus one anymore because we actually want the next blank space, which is just row number, is equal to, and then we're going to put next transaction ID. And then what we want to do is in B, that's going to be the username. Now the username is one that I'll show how to get right now. For now I'm going to leave that blank. And C, we're going to put question 1, which is going to be the gender. I don't I don't have a Q, Q4, so I'm going to delete Q4. And we're going to take off next transaction ID. We're going to fill that in with Q1 answer. Q1, Q2, and Q3. Just gonna copy and paste it and just make sure you change the C, the D, and the E. Just change the column so that we're assigning them to the correct column. And let's go on and just try running this code out. What I was going to do for the username is just get the NT of the user that's currently signed in, but let me just go on and try this code out. I'm gonna hit submit. Go back to my survey responses, and there you have transaction ID 1. Q1 is full out mail. We have 30, and yes. Now, what you want to do is clear these out once you're done, but I'm just going to hit submit several times real quick. And that way you can see how the transactions are being assigned and how it's, it's working properly. Now, the last thing that you're going to want to do just to that macro, go to the Visual Basic environment. get this same information up here but just erase Q1, Q2, and Q3 and just do it to equals double quote double quote that way we can just erase C6, C7, and C8 from the original field and now we can hit submit and now if the user was to try to do it again now it will tell them to fill in the question once since we just cleared out their responses and there you have the next the next transaction. Under username, I mean you can put in your own value, whatever value you'd like. If you want to put the user NT, then use the function to call the username from the Microsoft Excel VBA environment. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.